Hello and welcome to our new investment strategy update. As we head into autumn, there are some clouds gathering in the global economy. Tailwinds from reopening, fiscal and monetary supports have all fallen. Indeed, many central banks are tightening policy. Growth is normalizing and China faced particular challenges from higher coal prices and a property sector slowdown in the third quarter. But fears of stagflation look overstated. Stagflation suggests an economy where inflation is running out of control and growth is near zero. We are very far from this. This year alone, growth is likely to be around 6% in the US and 5% in Europe, hardly pedestrian. And while it will be lower in 2022, it will still be above trend. In China, the authorities have a lot of room to support flagging growth through both fiscal and monetary channels. In inflation, temporary issues are obscuring the broader picture. Prices are recovering from crisis lows. Supply chain disruptions in areas like shipping and energy should normalize as inventories are rebuilt and the Delta variant starts to fade. We believe central banks will look through current high inflation figures as price pressures recede next year. In short, this is not stagflation. It is merely a new phase in this economic recovery. Fundamentals remain solid, corporate profits are high, employment continues to improve, while consumers built lots of savings during the pandemic. Governments are investing trillions in a green recovery, and while central banks are withdrawing some of the emergency support, it is being done gradually and flexibly. So while we are closely monitoring the risks from supply bottlenecks, tighter financial conditions, and excess leverage in China, we see no major risk of slowdown ahead. With this in mind, let's now turn to Stefan to see how we are implementing these views in portfolios. This complex path back to normal is translating into volatile markets. But as Sami just said, the economic fundamentals are solid. And that's why we maintain a constructive stance on risk assets. Selectivity, however, will be crucial. Equities can offer more return in this environment because corporate earnings will continue to grow. We still favor value and cyclical stocks, particularly in Europe. In addition, after the German elections, we see opportunities to continue to invest in companies that focus on the net zero transition. We have also increased our exposures to Chinese and Japanese stocks as both equity markets have underperformed this year and now offer a better risk return profile. In fixed income, Chinese sovereign debt in renminbi, emerging market debt in hard currency, and select idle credit can also provide additional yield. In currencies, our bearish US dollar view was clearly challenged this summer as global growth decelerated and the Federal Reserve turned more hawkish. Short term, the dollar should remain supported, but as the economic data stabilizes and growth concerns fade by your end, its depreciation trend should resume. Finally, we believe portfolios can benefit from investments in infrastructure as governments around the world step up their public spending. We also recommend more allocation to private assets for those investors who are both able and willing to incorporate more illiquid strategies into their holdings. Of course, sustainability remains key to every investment consideration. We are building the tools to measure and mitigate climate risk in clients' portfolios and focus on investment that support the net zero transition. That's why we will be closely monitoring any new commitments at the UN COP26 climate conference in Glasgow at the end of October. As we enter the year's last quarter, the process of economic normalization and markets will remain volatile. This demands dynamic portfolio positioning to weather short-term headwinds and seize opportunities for additional performance. Thank you very much for watching.